Do you suffer from uh, POTS, POTS condition? Do you suffer from chronic urinary tract infections? Do you suffer from neuropathies and heart palpitations? Uh, inability to keep that blood up to the brain that POTS is, a uh, postural orthostatic uh, condition where you stand up and you feel like you just can't keep your balance or you get very lightheaded or dizzy. Um, a woman comes into my clinic and she's got a, on a severity of one to 10, uh, her rating of the tingling, burning, numbness in the top and bottom of her feet and the shins and the calves, she said it's at a nine, just, a, just a, a notch below the 10 of the most severe. She says that she has a rapid heart rate that occurs uh, once she stands up, whether she's lying down to standing or sitting to standing. Um, there was a terrible issue with her POTS condition when they did the tilt table test on her prior to meeting me. She had uh, a very uh, uh, low blood pressure that happened, almost passed out with that. She's got terrible, severe fatigue. She's constipated, only goes one time every five days. Um, she has to take uh, Seneca once every other day to try to help her go to the bathroom. Um, the, do the doctors had actually put in for her POTS condition and her rapid heart rate, they put in a pacemaker for one year, then they removed it because it wasn't helping her. She's had in her overall body uh, history of certain conditions. She's had chronic urinary tract infections since she's three years of age. She's in her 50s coming in here. She was born in 1961. She's had a diagnosis of interstitial cystitis. She's had fibroids, which they did the hysterectomy to remove the tissue where the fibroids uh, grew. She's had a blood transfusion in her past. She's had epidurals. She's had C-sections for her children. Uh, and, um, and gallbladder was removed. Uh, the main reason why she came to me is because of her POTS condition, her chronic fatigue, and she just really needs some help. And it was very interesting when I started the examination with her on her first day here, which was November 17th. And I saw her the very next day, her body, her vitality level, her energy, her strength was so low that we had to start off with just a little bit of help and see her again the very next day for a second examination. But it was very interesting with her, what showed up on that first examination was that Lyme infection in a tooth in her mouth, it was hiding there, not a cavity tooth, but the tooth infected with Lyme and that Lyme is dripping out into the tissues causing part of her whole problem in her body. She also has um, some interesting findings in that first exam about tobacco smoke, uh, she was a smoker in the past, tobacco smoke and parasitic flukes and other parasites and Lyme infection in arteries going up into the brain and the cerebral artery in the brain. And she had also, which was very interesting, and I didn't catch this in the first point of the discussion with her, but in her kidney, she had Lyme infection, she had mercury in there and uh, worms, and also she has residues from silicone implants. She did have breast implants several uh, years ago and the very interesting now, when I found this and started talking to her about it, the POTS condition for her, her heart condition, her, her, her blood pressure, the whole, the whole weakness that happens when she's standing for a few minutes, uh, actually eight to 10 minutes, she starts to notice the weakness in the body and the lightheadedness. It started shortly after she had breast implants. So we found the silicone in the kidney nephron. What does your kidney do for you? Your kidney filters around the fluids. It helps to filter blood also. And the kidney, according to 5,000 years of, of Chinese uh, documented reports of, uh, of the Chinese medicine, the kidney is the seat of all energy of the body. So if the kidneys got some infection or toxin, it can cause everything else to uh, become weaker in the body. Well, it was very interesting that on her next day when she came in, the very second day, I sent her back to her hotel room with a protocol to follow, and that protocol was to be taken throughout until about one in the morning. When I saw her on the very next day, she gave me some startling, startling results or, or reports of her response to my first treatment with her. And what she said was, uh, as I started describing that she could have you know, different areas of infection in the body, I call it a gang up effect but well, there could be areas of infection in different parts of the body that all make one tissue go weak. It's like having 10 gang members or 20 gang members around you picking on you. You, could, you try to knock out one, but you still have 19 others there that can uh, hurt you. So we've got to get all of them because you get rid of 19 gang members, there's one left, that one can still hurt you. 
So it was very interesting for her, what she reported on that very second day before her second exam with me, was that she had this, it looked like a worm or some kind of critter that would crawl around in her eye is what she told me. It seemed like something that would just move around in the eye. She was seeing it for a few years now. After the first treatment with her that very next day when she woke up and into the time when she came here in that afternoon, she had not seen that thing floating around in her eye. It was completely gone. And why I, why I brought this up about the gang up effect is that I was mentioning to her about this organ and that organ and the eye could actually reflex to parts of the brain of the heart and make the body sick and make the heart sick. Well, she then said, funny you say the eye because I've had this floater in my eye for a few years and now it is gone. And I said, gone? Have you ever had days where it hasn't appeared? She said, no, every single day, every night, I see this, it looks like some critter crawling around in my eye, it's gone. The next uh, a comment from her on that second day was, Dr. Herman, when I got up out of bed, my heart did not race. Now she's had a tachycardia symptom, a rapid heartbeat every single time she steps up out of the seat, out of the car, she gets up out of bed, she gets up off the toilet, she gets out of any chair. When she stands up, the heart starts racing really fast. She gets anxious from that. It's not a fun feeling. It's not a good, comfortable feeling. When she came in that second day, she told me no more tachycardia. I said, come on, are you telling me that when you got out of bed this morning, you did not have a heart race? And she thought about it and thought about it. She said it was not there. Are you telling me that when you went to the bathroom and stood up from the toilet, you did not have your heart race experience? She said, no. When you just got out of the car to come in here into my clinic, when you stood up out of the car from the seating to standing position, did your heart race? No. I said, do it for me right now, stand up. And she did and the heart was not racing. Pretty incredible. Remove the causes, remove the causes of the condition, remove the causes that are stressing your body that make the symptoms appear and you will see the symptoms disappear. In her second exam, I found more Lyme infection that was in that tooth. So we were only able to go in with a little dose to get rid of some of the Lyme infection, but it was her body was too weak on the first day. When she came in for the second day, the reevaluation, her vitality was way up. We were able to go after the whole Lyme infection in that tooth, which was the weakest tissue in her body. You can only be as strong as your weakest link. So going after a stronger tissue where you think you have your primary symptom like the heart, it may not be that the heart, the body says, it's not the heart that needs help first. Help something else that's stressing my heart help another tissue in my body get better so it takes away a gang member that's picking on my heart. It may not be the heart in your body. That's the number one cause of the stress. I found in her, on her AV node, now you have an SA node to your heart and you have an AV node to your heart. Her AV node, I found the Borrelia Lyme infection. And get this, very interesting, because all the women with silicone implants are going through concerns about part of their condition, their chronic disease, whether it's chronic pain or fatigue or headaches or whatever the symptoms are. And I'm not minimizing by saying whatever the symptoms, there's just a boatload of different conditions that can occur in a person. And from one person to another, different symptoms can occur from the same thing. Well, it turned out that on her AV node, not only was there Lyme infection, but there was silicone implant material. There's residues of the silicone breast implants on the AV node and it's causing a mal a malfunction, a misfiring of the way the heart's beating. I also found in the retina of her eye, silicone, lime in those tissues. I also found in the cerebral artery going into her brain, silicone implant residues and the Borrelia Lyme, Borrelia burgdorferi, also known as the Lyme infection or the bacteria that causes the Lyme disease. She was sent home with a protocol. I will see her in 36 days from the time she started her first remedy with me. Now it was very interesting that the silicone implants came up because she is quite honestly in this November 27th, when I'm reporting this, November 27th of 2015, she's the first, I have a sample of the silicone implant material. She's the first of dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of women who I have examined for their chronic condition. She's the first who's come up with the silicone implant material and very eye-opening for her and for me. And quite honestly, it brought tears to her eyes because you know she, it's, she put something in her body that actually made her sick. It wasn't some other, uh, uh, primarily, it wasn't just only one thing that caused this condition. It was something that she, you know, it's an elective procedure. Um, 
So uh, she may go after getting those removed right now or maybe after the next round of what we're going to be doing together. But she's on this protocol. I see her again on 36 days, and I will report to you exactly uh, you know what her response to care is. She's been to different types of practitioners. She's been to many different practitioners and hospitals. She said boatloads of tests done, some of so-called the best neurologists you know, that she's been to in the top-notch facilities have not figured it out for her. And already after the first day of treatment with me, the floater, that critter, whatever it was in her eye disappeared. And when she stood up out of the chair, the tachycardia was no longer in existence. I spoke to her a few days later, because I spoke to her the very next day. We had to ship her some parts of her protocol to her home. I spoke to her that day, and I spoke to her a few days after that, uh, which would be in the next week. And she was still telling me to those days that she did not have the tachycardia at all. She is. She has a very positive outlook for what her future uh, is going to bring her. And I'm positive that we'll be able to get the job done for her and help her live normal. And quite honestly, I hope it doesn't take too long. To tell you the truth, I hope that I get her better so fast that she can just move along in her life and she doesn't have to continue to come back here so many times. You have a better, you want to do other things than to sit in some doctor's office and try to get better and, and do and, and, you know, and have treatments done. Uh, so as soon as I see her again, and she said she's devoted to following this protocol, she's already seen, seen the results and she's committed to getting herself well, and this is the only thing that's made sense to her in the past few years. Uh, so once I see her again and I get through the, uh, get the results from her, what her response is to the treatment, I will be making up a video regarding that, and I will share her next protocol. So when it comes to POTS, when it comes to tachycardia that's unexplained by physicians, when it comes to dizziness and fatigue and neuropathy that cannot be figured out by your conventional medicine doctors or your chiropractor or your acupuncturist or anybody else, it's time to give something totally outside of the box a chance. My practice, my practice, I'm Dr. Lonnie Herman, and my practice is based solely on the people with chronic illness who don't get better elsewhere. And I help them get well. Whether it takes one visit, two visits, or 20 visits, there's always a peeling away of what's causing their disease, and there's always improvements that will be had by that individual. Okay, why don't you subscribe on my YouTube channel here? And I put up videos here all the time. So subscribe and you'll be the first to know when those new videos are put up. You can like me on my Facebook page. I share information there all the time that sometimes is not put on my YouTube channel. And also, why don't you share this video with just one friend? Because there are people out there who need to know that there are answers, that there are ways to help them get well and stop suffering from chronic disease. Thank you for letting me come into your home and share this information with you. And I look forward to sharing with you these results and many others. Scroll down my YouTube channel and you're going to see video after video after video with some very unique exam findings and clinical experience and patient experience and response to care. All right. And even if the title of the video doesn't seem to match your condition, you deserve to hear some of the other exam findings and how unique this is. And, uh, and uh, it's time to uh, get you well. Okay. Talk to you soon.